ways of writing different responsive patterns. So we have a limited amount of time, so let's see how much, how many different things we can cover today. The focus is going to be mostly on the on the HTML and on the CSS. The HTML I've already prepared for you at this link. If you download that, you'll have a zip file with all the files there. So this way that we are not going to waste time sitting and typing or worrying about mistakes and all that. We'll only focus, like we'll take a look at the markup about how it is written and why it is written in that way. And then we'll look at what what would be the best way to, what ways we can create a good layout that would work well in a mobile, in a tablet and on a PC. So one of the things that I see is, well actually let, before we start that, now how many of you are familiar, very comfortable with HTML and CSS? How many of you are not? Okay, so let's do this. Which one? No, let's go to desktop. Start with desktop. Hmm. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Right, so you need to open the individual HTML file itself. Don't worry about the links, the links are not, it's not all linked up. Alright. So here's the thing. We have one file uh, getting started.html. So please open that. Huh? Yes, yes, I understand that. So the, sty the styles are not written for you. Okay, this is what, this is the first exercise. The HTML has been prepared for you. Your job is to write the CSS. Okay? Got it? This is the layout that you have to build. You all said that you know front end design, you know how to write CSS. So, build this. So your first exercise is to start with this. Write the CSS. Now if you take a look at the HTML file. You have this, uh, this CSS file already linked. So just open this, it's a blank file. Don't worry about so much about the colors and the styling but the layout. Now here's what I'm actually looking for. Now this is a initial like if you just look at it on the desktop, this is a layout, but this is actually a responsive layout. So you have these three. So initially at least at the minimum, even if you are not used to responsive layouts, at least just build the desktop layout. Yes. So this is a layout, you have 10 minutes to build this layout. Eight. Yeah, just pass it on to after you copy it, it's just a small file. Just copy pass it on. <laughs> Yeah, so here. Can I You need the files? Yeah, yeah. So if anybody else hasn't gotten the file, that is the link tinyurl.com slash oq I guess. Alright, so download the file. If you can't, I'll share the, just use the pen drive. Okay, who doesn't have the HTML file open? Okay, are you done copying? Did you get the files? Alright. So that's the link you need to download, otherwise I have the zip file right here. So if you look at the HTML here, it's actually very, very plain. 
we have a container we have a header with h1 and h2 we have a list of links and we have three paragraphs so we are just formatting that into this layout it doesn't have to be exact doesn't have to be identical this is just for get as close to it as possible If anybody needs a file, let me know. So everybody has a file now. Make sure that you have this HTML file open. Getting started dot HTML, and then open the CSS file and start writing. So do you have do you have this file open? Getting started. Or just yeah. 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 So open that in the browser. Take a look at what you have. So none of the styles are there. So now I want this layout built. I want you to build this layout. So there is a file getting started. Or CSS. Just do that. So the colors. It doesn't need to be identical. So we are just getting started. So I want you to start with this, and then we will go to the next step. Don't try to worry about pixel perfection or about exact colors. Just do an approximate. Version of this. Uh, in the meantime, so quick uh, question: How many of you have written responsive layouts before, even a basic responsive layout? Okay, keep your hands up. Without keep Bootstrap. no, no, just keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Okay, how many of you have done it without using uh, something like Bootstrap, which does it for you? How many have actually written a responsive layout with your own CSS? Okay, that's quite a good number. All right. Without Bootstrap, without Foundation, like you can use SAS, Sozio, whatever, but not a ready-made framework that does it for you. Okay, so how many of you have not done responsive layouts at all, or don't know how media queries work? Like you have basic idea, but you have not actually used media queries before manually. Okay, sorry. Okay, how many of you have finished the layout? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, we are using only plain CSS. Please don't bring in Bootstrap or anything else into your folder, right? <laughs> We are going to learn how to write responsive layouts in different design patterns. Like this is a very basic layout, but we are going to be doing more complex layouts which you cannot build using Bootstrap. So, like, let's not use a tool that will restrict our design. Those of you who are comfortable with responsive layouts and know how to use media queries, add this and this. Don't worry about don't worry about the colors. Don't worry about the backgrounds. Just a rough version of the layout. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So now 
when you make it smaller, yeah, I want this to shoot. Yeah. Yes, I want it to change to 2. That goes from 6 to 3. This goes from 3 to 2. And then this. Yes? Yes, sir? I don't want to do that. Yeah, so that's the reason for this workshop. <laughs> so I'll show you how to do it. Yes? Yeah, so here we have six beside each other. When you make it smaller, move it to this. Alright. So, how many of you are able to get this done? Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. So instead of taking too much more time, let me just show you quickly how we could do this. All right. Uh, now, uh, let's not worry about H1 and H2. They are not really changing. Let's just focus on the chapters. Let's take an approximate. What's the yes. Let's go with block. Okay, let me open this. Okay, so this is what it initially looks like it, with the little CSS that I wrote. Uh, let's change. And margin. Okay, this is approximately rough idea of what we wanted to be. Yeah. But we have some text floating, so we want to clear the float. So just go here. Okay. Okay, so what we have done is we have removed the margins and the padding so it stretches all the way. Now remember we are doing very rough, we are not trying to go with exact numbers and all that because you can do that later. Just to see the pattern. Uh, we have the list element which we are taking it, floating it to the left, giving it a width of about 15% and so we are getting, we are able to fit in 6 of them. What we want to do now is we want to change it at a slightly smaller screen size. So let's set it. Okay, so. If you don't give workflow hidden, then this element, the unordered list, the UL, when you have elements inside it that are floated, the UL itself doesn't have a height or a width. Like it doesn't have a height at all. So by setting it to workflow hidden, the unordered list comes all the way here and pushes the content, other content below it. So it's just, it's just basically clear, clearing codes. It's a clear fix. That's how clear fix works. Like the simplest way to do it. You don't have to do all that before, after, and all that. Ah, that's this is the simplest way to do it. Like it depends on how. Yeah. But like, I mean, is it supported? This is the simplest way to do it. This will work in our browser. Workflow hidden. That other one gives you other options. Like you might have an item that is coming out of the box and work with different items. Like if you have an item that is like different items. Yeah. So the other way gives you more flexibility, but for the sake of this thing, it's this is the simplest way to do it. <laughs> okay. Yes. What uh, what is the advantage of using float left over 
So this is like we are. It doesn't really matter. You could use for display inline block and do the same thing. Uh, with except that float allows you to give precise margins. Uh, display inline block will display will uh, use it as an inline element which will always have a space after it. So you won't be able to control the exact space margin. So in this case, if you have five things, I mean, if you have more elements, twenty five percent each. Yeah. Okay. So here. <laughs> okay. So we have this part done. Now what we need to do is we want to change it at a certain grid. So then we add a media grid. This is what it looks like. I have a basic question. What is the media grid? Yeah. I'll just show you. I'll explain one second. Okay, now have in CSS when you are adding a CSS file to your HTML file, you have a thing called a link style uh, uh, style sheet and all of that. Then you can even say media screen. Then you have another other type of media which is called media print. So that you can say that instead of having colors, instead of having a background of black, I just want the background to be white and I want the text to be black. Like you can customize it for print. You can customize it for like you also have media. You can have CSS which is just for a screen reader. For example, we have different media's. Now, media queries in now in CSS three have additional features which allow you to specify that okay, this is for the screen, but apply this CSS only when the maximum width is six forty pixels. That means if the screen is six forty pixels or less, it will make this yellow. So, if I make this narrower, yeah, sorry. See this? If you take a look, it's white. Make it narrower. It's yellow. So basically, this CSS, anything written inside this media query, only will apply if this, if it meets this condition. So you have options of maximum width, or you have the reverse, which is minimum width. So start from this, and then when it crosses a certain width, 700 pixels and greater, then do this. So you can do that. That's basically what media queries do. If you go online, I'll give you links at the ending. There, there are a lot of media queries. Not all of them are supported, but you have options of max width, min width. You have port. You can select specifically. You can do a layout which is for portrait versus landscape. But for the most part, this is the one that is most commonly used, max and min. So we are basically adjusting the layout based on the width of the screen. No, that's what I'm saying, right? You could say that regardless of the length, regardless of the max width. I want a tablet or a phone in portrait to have one view, and a tablet or a phone in landscape to have a different view. That's not a common use case, but you can do it. That's an option that is there for you, depending on your design. Okay, so anyone have a doubt about how media queries work, or did you get this part? Okay, so here's the thing. What we are going to do here is this: we set a certain width for this element for the nav li, right? We are going to change the width over here. We said that the list element is 15 per 15 percent wide. So at 640 and below, we are saying now refresh this. So with just this, we said at this screen size, change the max width. So now each list element is. Thirty percent of the screen. Can you now do? Now, since you have seen this, see how we can do the next one. So, add a, another media query below this, but make it four hundred pixels or four eighty pixels, and then have them in just two beside each other instead of three beside each other. Okay. So, one thing everyone needs to remember is that we are talking about style sheets. This is CSS, so you have cascading style sheets. So one thing overrides. So this overrides the previous one, right? But if the previous line is specific, for example, here you have nav li, and here also we have nav li, right? So both have the same specificity with the media query changing. But if you don't do that, or if you if you do this, like you have nav li here, which is less specific, but that is more specific. That will still override this. This won't work because that is more specific. 
right? Same way if you have a class. So remember when you are writing CSS elements, the, the styles, make sure that your specificity, you don't make it too specific. Or if you do, you will have to cover, use that at every stage. So if you have like navigation, nav, ul, or header, then nav, then ul, then li, then a, then you will have to use the same thing in every place that you want to do it. If you want to override it, or you have to add additional classes to that. Okay? So try to keep it as less specific as possible. <laughs> okay. So, so far this is like the most basic layout possible. So this is just to introduce how to use media queries. Are we done with this part? Any doubts? Okay, so let's take a look at the next layout which is actually the layout that I want to talk about. Now this layout is very simple, like it looks exactly like what Bootstrap allows you to do. You have columns and they merge and different things. Except that we are adding like instead of just two layouts, you have like three layouts. So they adjust in between, they merge, things like that. Now, but this is a this is actually a very bad design pattern. Okay, now why is this a bad design pattern? I'll explain this here. Let's take a look at the next one. Now here we have a parag some paragraphs over here, an article, and we have a block quote, right? So this is one column. So you have one column here, one column here, and one column here. Now by default, in the normal way, if you merged it, this one would go below the article, correct? Now if you're reading on a mobile or on a smaller screen, does it make sense for the full quote to be here or to be at the very bottom? Beside. It should be beside, or it should be at the minimum. If you have less place, it should come in here or here, wherever, whichever paragraph it is a part of. It should not go to the very bottom, right? But that is the way that we generally look at, right? Our layouts are generally written like that in responsive layouts. You have one container, you have one column, two column, three column, you reduce it and then you reduce it and that's it. But that's not, that's not optimal. You're, you have to think about what your content is doing. Like the previous talk was also about that, right? Your content is important. That is what's most important. Your layout has to facilitate, make sure that Whichever screen your user is using, the content is presented in the best way possible. Okay. And that's one thing. Second, now you have an article and then you have some information about the author. Now, if you are reading on a phone, do you want to read about the author first or do you want to read the article first? The article is most important. Now, if you are reading on the desktop, you can just ignore that. Correct? You can ignore it and you can read the article if you want to. But on a mobile, like if you have to scroll through like two, three screens before you can actually see the article, that's going to be irritating. So what ideal would be that this goes to the bottom and this merges in here. And that's the layout that we are going to first, that's the first layout that we are going to work on. Okay? So look at what happens here. Make it smaller. <coughs> the author info disappeared. Come to the bottom. It's right here. Alright? First. Second. We still have the block quote over here. I want it to merge in. Like this. Okay? So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Alright, so this is the first exercise that we are going to work on. Alright? So, I am going to show you a very, now, this looks very impressive. Thank you for your class, but the fact is that this is extremely simple to do. Alright? And we don't, most of us don't do it this way because we use things like Bootstrap or Foundation and things that handle it automatically for us. So we don't think about the design, but we are supposed to be designers. Like our, we are supposed to design it in a way that makes sense, not in a way that some framework tells us to do it, right? That's what we are here for. If uh, if if you just use Bootstrap and let every, every that make all the decision for you or for me, then why are we here, right? Our job is to make things not just look good but to work well. So this is the very first exercise. Next exercise is going to be. This is going to be like a small part of it, which is just this image with the caption modifying a little bit. That's one. And three, a slideshow which is almost all CSS with just a little bit of JavaScript. So in Sovik around, I think he'll be happy if he sees that. But right, so two elements animated separately with about six or six to ten lines of JavaScript. Everything else is done in CSS. Now creating a slideshow that is responsive has some complications which we'll cover when we come to that. And here's the final 
the navigation over here like this, but when you change it, Facebook style side menu. All right. So this is basically what we are going to try to cover today in three hours if we can do it. If we can, so we'll try. That's the reason that I've given you all the HTML, the JavaScript, everything is given to you so that you can you don't have to spend time doing that. All our time is going to be focused on just writing the layouts. Even the styles, the colors, the fonts, everything is set for you. So if you open the file, you'll see that all the colors and everything is set. If you open the second file, article, stu.article HTML, open that file, you'll see that all the styles, the colors, the fonts, all of that is done for you. So you don't have to spend time trying to make it look good. So I don't want you to waste your time doing that. Today we are only going to focus on creating the, a good layout, a good responsive layout. All right. So the basic, the basic point of this workshop, so when I'm saying responsive design, web design done right, is about look at the content, look at how, how, what kind of a layout makes sense at different screen sizes. Okay. And design it accordingly. So you are not just thinking about it in terms of columns, but in terms of how the different pieces of content are connected to each other. And in this case, when we are doing this, one of the things that you probably heard a lot about is about mobile first design. Starting with the mobile first. And to do something like this, you need to start with the mobile first because how do you know that this way you, it's not just with the mobile, you start first with the HTML itself. So make sure that the structure is right. If the structure for this is right, then to change it from the small screen to the bigger screen is actually very, very simple. All right. So we are going to see how to do that. Let's just open it, open the file. Oh, and by the way, this menu, sliding in, slide out, is without any JavaScript. I said literally no JavaScript is there, not a single line of JavaScript. For this, not even just when you click on it, there is no on-click handler. It's just CSS with uh, target, which I will explain how that works. Anyway, all right. So this is the, this is what we are trying to do. Let's take a look at the. Okay. Let's open the file. Open this file. This is what you will see. Okay. So all the styles are set for you. You have the initial links. So we are starting with mobile first. So this is the mobile. The initial all the styles are for the mobile layout. Scroll down. So you already have this part done. Right. The merging part. We don't have to worry about merging part. We are just going to figure out how to move it to the side. Alright. So this is the initial layout. This is the mobile layout. With essentially no style set up there. We have this text, we have the slideshow without any slides happening. So when you say the merging part is already figured out, the, that bit of the... As in it is already inside, it is merged. Like you are starting, you are starting with mobile first. Let's look at that. So for this, let's look at the code. Let's look at the markup. Now the navigation is pretty simple. You have nested lists, right? There's no color. That's how you normally write a multi-level navigation. Next. This is, a, this is where the important, but all the fun happens basically. You have the article. Inside the article, you have the header, okay, which is the title. Then you have the section, which is the story over here. In the story, you have paragraph, second, third paragraph, and then the block quote right there. Like if you remove the CSS, that's, you still get that same layout, okay. You can even take a like, if you want, you could just say, okay, remove the CSS files completely. And refresh it, and you have the block quote right there without any styling. Correct? So the markup has to be written properly for this to work. <coughs> so, in the sensible manner, so if a person, assuming that, let's say if someone who is differently able, the person is who is blind is, is reading through your article you know, using a screen reader. They are also going to get the exact same order, which makes sense, right? They should also, like, even for a person who is using a screen reader, they still want the block quote in the place where a block quote is supposed to be. It would make absolutely no sense for this to be read at the very bottom. Correct? So that's what we are doing here. So we have the markup. Any doubts about any part of this, about the HTML itself? Right. So let's start with the CSS. Let's
So we start with okay. We have the page. Let's just give some margins or some padding to it. Or actually, this okay. How many of you know what is box sizing? Border box. Anyone? Few of you. Many of you don't know. Okay. So normally in CSS, when we are looking at the previous layout, uh, let me just take open that. Now, if you see here, we set the width to uh, fifteen percent and gave a margin of one. Or if you do anything with the padding as well, if you add, if you have this width set to fifteen percent and you add padding of two percent, what will happen? The width will change to seventeen percent. It will be fifteen percent plus two, so it is adding to whatever the width is set. Huh? Right. Correct. So if you add one percent on both sides, so totally two percent or whichever. Right. So whatever you are doing. You are adding padding, margin, border. Everything adds to what is already there, right? It doesn't stay within. Like, I if you wanted, let's say four columns here, and you set four columns to twenty five percent each, and then you set padding of one percent. Instead of being twenty five percent, it will increase in size. Again, if you even if you add like you want a one pixel border, that one pixel border will break your layout. Correct? Like you have twenty five percent width, and then you have a one pixel border, and it will change your width so that four columns don't fit in your place. In as they are supposed to, correct? So, border bo border box is something that's a little newer, which basically says that whatever the width is set, paddings, borders, everything has to be within that. Okay, so that means if I set something to twenty five percent and then have a ten pixel border, it will not break my layout. It will stay within the twenty five percent. Okay, so that's what we are going to do for this. We are going to say that we want to use. Yes. So open the article or CSS and do this. So essentially, we are saying I want everywhere, every element to use this. Okay. So every element that we are doing instead of having to set at each place, just star every HTML element, box sizing, border box. Next, let's go to page. Okay, let's say padding of what do you want to do? A percentage, one percent or two percent? And we want like if you have a very big screen, like we don't want it to go like so wide, right? So let's set a max width of. What do you want to set it to? Now we don't want it to be hundred percent. We want it to be like in a less than that, right? So max width of let's say nine sixty pixels and margin. Now it will stay centered and it won't cross nine sixty pixels. What do you say the margin? Ah, uh, zero auto. So if you want to center an element, unless it's as long as it's not floated. A block element. You want to center it. Just set the left and right margins to auto. Next. Okay. Now, next part. What we want to do is we don't want. We want to focus on the article right now. Okay. We have the image. We have the slideshow. We have the navigation. We are going to look at that later, but we are not going to look at that right now, right? We don't want all of those in the way while we are doing this. So let's just hide them for now, temporarily. So now, and uh, this is figure, and this is slide. Okay.
Alright. So we are just hiding the elements that we are not working on now. So normally you don't want to use display none unless you don't want it to be visible at all. But for the sake of just temporarily, we just don't want those in the way. We are just going to look at the article. So this is what we have. Let's also hide the links. So do this. Okay. So this is what you have. Okay. Now, first part. We are going to see how, like on the mobile screen, this is what is there, right? On as you move slightly larger to a larger screen, we want this to move to the right. Got it? Any doubts? Okay, so let's do that. Let's say that once you cross 600 pixels, let's let's set like. So here's one thing about media queries. Uh, don't necessarily fix a, fix on search on specific screen size. Don't say that this is for mobile, this is for tablet, and this is for desktop. Because think about it, you have a you have small phones that are three and three point five inch screens. You have large phones that are five point five and six inches. Now you don't want to give this now a three and a half inch screen and a five and a half inch screen. If you look in terms of the total area, it's more than twice as big, right? So there is no need. There is no real reason for you to give the same layout to every cell phone, every smartphone. You can customize it. My recommendation would be not to customize based on the device, but customize it based on your content and the screen size. So if now this article, if it looks fine, like you have uh, you have websites where the article span the full width or is a single column even on desktop. Like you don't need to worry about like okay, it is on a desktop, so I need to have two columns. There is no such rule. Look at your content, look at your requirements and how it looks, and adjust your layout accordingly. All right. So in this case, we are taking 600 pixels. Like if you don't like 600 pixels, if you think it needs to be 640 or 480, do that. All right. Okay. So at this size, now we are going to make some adjustments to the layout. So let's say that here in the story. So let's specify story and P. And uh, Do this, open your page, refresh it. Now, look at your layout. What happens? Your blog code looks a little messed up. That's fine because we haven't yet worked on that. We wanted this to be 75% width, right? We got that. Now all we want is now this is kind of already moved because of the code, but we want to move it properly. So this is what we'll do. Okay, instead of, seven, instead of 75, let's change it to 70%. I think that bit will look better. But no rule there. Now we'll set this to 25% and float right. Now refresh your page and see what happens. You got it? Did you do this? Look at your page. Story, the paragraph, 70% and float left. Block quote, 25% and float right. Not able to see? Let me move it up. Are you are you able to see the screen or do you want the lights to stop? The light is not making a difference, just like the angle is too sharp. Okay, so the, so here we have media query, story P width 70% and float left, and for the block quote 25% width and float right. Now if you 
look at what happens now. Refresh your page. <coughs> this is what we wanted. Was it difficult? Just simple. Float left, float right, set the width. Uh, can you adjust this placement? Okay. So this, yeah? Okay, so right now, this is related to this, right? So you can either set a margin for this, or if you want it to be below this, just say clear both. Let's say if you want this, instead of being beside this, you want it to be after this, right? So just say clear both. If you wanted to move to the very top, then you have to uh, change it a little bit in the way you do it. But you can do it. Yes. Okay, all of you, how many of you have gotten this? Okay, uh, all right. Okay, so you understand how float, do you understand how floats work? Floats basically, it's essentially every element goes to the top left. So assuming you're floating to the left, so it goes to the very top. The next element, it's if there is, a, based on the width, if there is space, if the next element is floated, it will come to beside it. Let me show, let me demonstrate. It's better if I do it this way. You have this paragraph, and then you have the second paragraph beside. Now when I say clear, instead of being beside it, it will always go below it. Even if there is space beside it, clear will move it below. That's it. So, when I have this, Look at where it is right now. It is below this, right? So these two elements are actually beside each other. Like it's at the right element. If I don't have the clear, it is beside it. If you say clear, then it goes below it. That's it. Now about moving the other stuff we are going, we'll look at other questions later about other different layouts. But for now, let's just focus on this layout. Finish this layout because I don't know if I'll have time to cover everything in the three hours. Based on that, we can have a discussion after this. All right. Okay, so this part. Any anyone have any doubts about this so far? Yes, it's fine. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, what's happening? Uh, Yes, Okay. All right. Yes. Okay, so everyone, one thing to be, one thing to remember, 
Remember this, these, these lines. Make sure that you have this. Okay, otherwise these elements will interfere during while we are doing this layout. When we come to that element, we'll, those elements will work on them. For now, I'll make sure they are hidden. Okay, first. Second, make sure that you are keeping the same as much as possible. Keep the same numbers. You can experiment with them later because if you do something different and then you say it's not working, I can't fix it. Okay. Now the third part was in this we wanted once you go so from 600 pixels you cross 800 pixels you want this to come to the side. Can you try to figure out use the same method, same technique that we use for that use the same technique and see if you can do this. Try to move the story to the right and get the get the footer up here. Yeah, that's it. Try. It's not. It's it's very simple. If anybody has a question in the first part, let me know. In the meantime, those of you who have finished this, please try to do the second part. This is We can look at it after. Uh, so basically, okay. What's the big thing? Seven, 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 seven. Okay, so actually, it should have moved to the side. Okay. It should have moved beside it, but it hasn't. We'll look at why. No, it doesn't. It will. Auto, it should automatically move to the side. But I find out it's the with the margin, so we we'll look at it with we'll remove the styling and do that. Okay. Next, anyone else has a doubt so far in the first part, not the footer. Okay. So work on the footer and see if you can get it there. Hmm? Get this to come here. Move this. So right now we have done. Yeah, this is what we have done, and the footer is all the way bottom. I want this to come to the left. That's very good. Four. How many of you did not understand how to do it? This part. Use the same technique that we used before. Just the floats and the widths. Got it? Okay. Didn't get it. Just try to use the same way that we did here. Just floating to the left and the right. I'll show you. So make sure that you are adding another media query. Please don't do this in the same media query because we also want this. We want this layout for the tablet, right? Then when you go to the desktop, then you want, the, or you go to the larger screen, then you want the footer to come. So don't do the next part in the same media query. So first thing is we have this media, this query over here. So 600 pixels. So add another one, which is for. Let's say 900 pixels. Okay? So we have one for 600, add one more for 900. And then do your code over here. Remember, there are two elements that we are working on right now. Ignore the paragraphs, the block quotes, all of that is done. Now we are focusing on the story and the footer. Just those two elements. So make sure that you are 
looking at that and not looking at the trying to float the story or the paragraphs and all. Don't float the paragraphs now again. Work on the story and the footer. Good. Perfect. Hi. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Okay, so should I show you? Okay, those of you who did not get it, should I show you how to do it now? Okay, three more minutes. Okay, your time's up. Now let's look at what we need to do. We want to. This is this entire thing is a story. Okay, so we float this to the right and give it a width of seventy percent or whatever you want to. And we have the footer. We float it to the left and give it a width as well. That's all. Try it. Let's go to the code. You also do simply do margin right also. Hmm? Yeah. You can just say margin right. No. Margin? Right. So automatically the books are behind you. So put a margin right. So if I just move a margin right, I don't need to close my footer. Okay. So you got this. We have the footer came up. But it, the image is too big. So what is option? What is solution for that? Just go here to the top and say image max width hundred percent. So it will never go outside its container. Got it? Any doubts? Yeah, I'm coming. Let me just show you the source. Yes? What's happening? So, so if you are writing the exact same CSS and there is a mistake, there will be some bug in your code. Like one small element might not be there. It's a total element in front class. See, double check if you have, if it's not working, there is always going to be some tiny one dot somewhere, one semicolon somewhere, or a bracket that you're using the wrong bracket. Most of the mistakes are just that. We just use a small, tiny thing that's very easy Yes, it's an HTML file. There are elements, there are elements that do more, but like actually in mind, if I Yeah, so. 
It just depends. Like you do have like ones that do the stuff for you. Some of the but. <laughs> Actually, like, essentially, in these kind of cases, in my work, I'm mostly using SAS. In SAS, if you made this mistake, it would blow up and say there is a like there it's there's a problem in certain some syntax error, which is actually like I like the fact that it blows up because then I can use it. So in SAS, uh, I will show you, I'll show you how that works. In SAS, you can nest media queries, like you can nest it inside another element. So if we had story, you would have this media query inside it here, right here. But instead of nesting an element inside the media query, and it will render the correct. I'll show that. Assuming we have time, or else I'll show you and give you links where you can take a look at it. Any doubts so far? So this is what we have completed. So let's just do a quick review. So we have the article. We have the blog posts. We have the story with the blog posts, and we have the footer. We started with a mobile layout. We started with this, with the block port in here, and the footer at the very bottom, right? Then, as the screen size increase increases, we are moving the block port to the sidebar. For this, all we are doing is we are just using simple floats: float left, float right, and width. Then, next, doing the same thing for the footer. Float left, twenty percent. Twenty five percent. Float right, seventy percent. And then <coughs> match width for the image, hundred percent, so that it doesn't go outside its borders. That's it. So exercise one is complete. Now we are going to look at the uh, next part. Any doubts so far? Yes. Uh, setting the match width hundred percent. Here, uh, look at this image. Max width hundred percent. So when you say maximum width of hundred, it can be less than that, but it won't go beyond that. Okay. Okay. So how many of you have used this max width ninety? This how many of you understand this? So what we are saying is that I you are not saying that it should always be nine sixty pixels. It should be nine sixty pixels or less. So that means if it is on a mobile screen and it is only the screen is only three hundred pixels or four hundred pixels wide. It will it will be four hundred pixels wide, but if it is greater than that, if it's if the width is if the screen is like you are on a very large screen, you don't want your paragraphs to be very very long, so it's difficult to read. They are saying it should never go beyond this. Okay, so depending on your layout, you might have nine sixty as a maximum, you might have twelve hundred as a maximum. It depends upon you. Like many of some apps that I work on, we have like twelve hundred pixels wide or whatever. But it's your option. But this sets it to a certain thing, and this centers it. So this is. This part is done. Now we are going to look at the image. Now this is again. This should be very simple for you to do this part. We have okay. So the HTML the HTML tag is a figure. That's the HTML5 tag. Figure. This has an image inside it, and it has a figure caption. So basically, it says that image and the caption are together instead of a single element. And I want this layout on a larger screen, but on the smaller screen, the layout is already done. So can you do this? So use the same method that we use for the paragraph and the block quote. On the small screen, it is like this. But below that, which is already, if you look at it, it's already there. What you need to do is right now we have hidden figure right at the top here. So remove this. Just go here. Say figure display block, and refresh your page. Page, you will see a bar. So make sure that you have this. This is what you should get. Figure, display block, and clear both. Only, only figure. Forget about the slide show. Right now we are only looking at the figure. So already everything else is hidden, right? So only the figure we are displaying for now and looking at that.
Okay, so did you get that? We have this, we want this. Forget about the slideshow right now, only this. We already have this, it just needs to change to this. That's all. The caption has to go to the right, that's it. Alright, so I'll tell you what's happening. Now many of you have done got a part of it right. Now we are taking a look at this. Here you have a figure. In the figure you have the image, right? They are saying float, no, let's set the width. 
seventy percent float left. You're getting this, or if you're even floating the second element. We are getting this problem. All of you got this. Now we had the exact same problem in the very first time when we were doing the links, where the element was. So you just need to add clear fix to this, because two elements are floated. The container element now doesn't have a height at all. So if you inspect the element, <coughs> now look at the figure. The figure has a height of zero pixels. Because both of its contain, containing elements are hidden, I mean both of them are floated. So all you need to do is go here. Go to hidden, to the figure element, and you're done. So this is what we have gotten. Okay, so complete this. Make sure that you have it all the way till the bottom, and then I'll then we'll now we have gotten all the elements positioned in the right places. Next, we'll look at actually creating the animation and having the slideshow. Okay, uh, so we don't have a lot of time. Let's. You got everyone gotten this far? We have the uh, we have set the width and the height and the position and all that is done. We have it. Be, the responsive part is done. Now the next part is to create the actual animation, right? So let's do that. Uh, okay, just look at this part. Can you see this? Can you see this here? Can you see a uh, class being changed, current, previous, and that? Okay, so that is what JavaScript is doing. That's all. Okay, it's uh, telling, uh, it's letting us, giving us information that this is supposed to be the current site. <coughs> this is the previous. This is the next, and that allow we will use those classes, current, previous, and is there a next? No, only current and previous. Right. So we are going to use these two classes to do a, to create our slideshow. All right. So first. Now, in a slideshow, every element that is, all the elements should not be displayed here, right? Only the current element should be here. So, by default, we don't want this box here. So, we are going to change the positioning here. Go here, and instead of left zero, we want the element to come from the right side, right? So, we'll say instead of left zero, let's set it to 101 percent. What does that do? Now, when you do it here. We can actually say overflow hidden is okay. Now, since I removed overflow hidden, you can see this. Can you see where it is now? It's just like this is a container and it's just right outside it. Now, what we will do next is we'll just say that take these two items.
Okay. So what we are saying, by default put this outside, like at 101 percent, and the current slide, make it zero. So bring it to its, to the position that we want it to be. So refresh it here. Now see what happens. The slides are changing. That slide comes here. Correct. Now, if you want to actually create the animation, what you do here is this. You go here and say, what's the transition duration? That's all you need to do to create the actual animation. So, you set it, set it to 101 percent, then set it to zero percent. And every time the class changes, the position changes, but instead of happening just jumping, it moves. Can you see that? Now, okay, so we got the first part. So we are having this element coming here, but then we want the current element not to go there, but to go here. Right? So then we add another class. We already have the class in this we saw, right? Previous. This is a class called previous. So let's just do that. Take this here. Okay, refresh and see what happens. What happened? Trying to figure something out. So, I mean, this is the core part. So, you still have a little bit with. Z index, like you need to make sure that when it's going back there, you don't want to be to be visible, things like that. We'll take a look at that, but like this is what the core part of your animation is working here. So we'll do that. Okay, but now before we go to the Z index part, we still need one more thing. Now. We want these two elements, they are being animated to, together. We want to animate, like we want the text to come slower. How do you do that? Huh? Just change the duration. So go here to the code. Here you have translated duration one second, right? So copy that into the span and change it to 1.5. That's it. So see, CSS is actually now with all the new features that we have in CSS 2, CSS 3, there are so many features that we have that are that work right now in current browsers. So you don't need to depend on JavaScript to create all the animations for you. Like this is just a very basic animation. You can do much more complex stuff than this. But the idea is that whatever you can do with CSS, do it with CSS. So see the JavaScript now, it's very, if you look at the code, it's so easy if you actually go and I want to modify it or want to change how it works. Or if there is a bug, you can actually very easily see what's happening and fix it. Because all your layout stuff is happening here. So if you want to hide the stuff that is beside, make sure you go here. So I'll go hidden. Now the animation happens. Any doubt so far? Yes? Yeah? We haven't yet done it. We need to do that. Yeah, so we have a class which is set as a for that. What we can basically do is
Beleza, sim, pessoal. Yeah, we just one second, just double checking it's working. It's still not working. So is it like the previous ones? Is that the next one is not tested? Yeah. No, it's actually not previous, so it doesn't last check. Well, the standard that it could be under the pandemic. Yeah. What? The standard error is that it is. Yeah. And you lower in the current one. That's what it is, right? The index one is an index trend, but that's not working. So, I, I have it working. Okay. But I've done it differently. Yeah. What I've done is, for your current and previous, yeah. for the current, I am setting it to zero. Hmm. For the previous, I am setting it to minus one. So, when the thing slides back, right, it goes behind the image and is not visible. But your current image is always at zero. Like zero. Are you setting it to the image or the LI element? Uh, the image and the current. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. The mistake was. So you still have a problem with the texture. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't set it to 10 and 1. Hmm. I've set it to 0 and minus 1. Okay. Are the tools? Just give the current one and give the remote. Yeah. Fine. Okay, so this is the final code. So this is all, basically it's the entire CS, the entire layout or the entire slide show then open the nav.css we are going to do it here now here's one thing that till now we have been doing one layout for like we are building from the mobile layout and then slowly building up the larger layout now in this case what we are going to do is we are going to have two completely different layouts one for mobile one for layout, desktop because like there is very little similarity in between the two so we so if you first do the mobile and then try to override you will have to override so many different things so for the sake of this, we'll just have everything in a media query. All right? You can al always do the regular method and then override it, but it will mean a lot more CSS query. So let's start with. <laughs> this layout is already done for you, so you have the navigation which. Uh, you have this already there, right? Now we are going to start with. Let's do the mobile layout first. So add a media query. Mm. We'll give this mobile layout for up to tablets for the menu. Like you can change it, you can do it differently. This is a bit good. Right. So, 800 pixels and below, we want to give it the <coughs> sliding menu, and above that, we want to give it the regular menu. So, let's start with both these elements. So, nav is going to be So you have the navigation element here and you have the page. So Okay, so let's see what's okay. So, initially, we are only looking at the navigation. Okay, so you have this at the you have it behind the content. So, when we actually add a background, so it will become it will you won't be able to see it later. 
but the idea is okay. So you are saying position fixed. So even when you scroll, even when you scroll this, this should not be affected. It should still stay in the same place wherever you are. First, second, you want it to be from the top to the bottom. You want it to stick, right? So you are just saying from top to bottom and stick to the left. So this, and you are giving it a width of two hundred pixels. So it will always stay within this area, no matter what the size of its uh, the screen itself is. When you go bigger than that, it changes. That doesn't affect only eight hundred pixels and below. Now for the page, what you can do is okay. What is this? So we have added a link over here. We have added two links over here. Okay. So we are using this. We are doing this without any JavaScript. We are just saying that we have two two links in the same class. One is show, one is hide, and the uh, href is different. So it just uses an anchor tag. Okay. Now look at this ID. What is this ID? So this when this matches this, you can target it. Okay, so you, when you click on this, the browser knows that this element has to be treated different. So it's a uh, another new pseudo class in CSS3. So make sure that this is correct. All right. Now let's take a look at this. Uh, I'll explain. This is ID menu, right? Here you have an anchor tag with the same ID. So when you click on this, you can target this. In CSS without JavaScript. So old only, right? Huh? It's not used like it's not supported, well supported in older browsers. You can use it. No. So see, normally when you, you know this old method is when you just scroll to it. But I am talking about applying CSS with it. Hash on the page. It does go to the hash of the page. But the hash of the page is this. Oh, yes. oh, so you're saying? Yes. I'll show you. We'll see. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, pseudo classes like hover and focus, right? So this is a new. This is another pseudo class called target. So what we'll do here is this. Uh, New target. Okay, so when the menu is targeted, the menu still stays in the same place. So how do you tell the page to move when the when that is hit? So what you say is menu target plus page. Uh, so essentially, we are telling it that the page element that is after this has to be moved. Okay, so here you have position absolute and the uh, Let's say you say the position here is left zero. Here you say position left twenty two uh, hundred pixels. Okay. Now go here. Did you see what happened? The URL over here changed. When that URL changes over there, we can use this target to target that. Okay, so you could just even do something like So when you're saying menu target, right? So whenever that URL changes to when that hash is clicked, you get the hash in the in the URL. Then you are able to use that to target CSS. So essentially, you can have certain level of behavior essentially just with CSS over here. So you click on something, you hide and show stuff. So how you had in a 
how we have over and uh, focus we have target so you can say okay so now one more thing is we have two links over there so when one link when it is hidden you want one link to be displayed one link to be so we'll just do that and uh, Okay, so this is what we have right now. We have a link. We have two links there. One link has the uh, hash exact hash which matches this hash menu, right? So when you click on that, we are able to assign target some CSS for this and use that also to target some CSS for this. And then when you click on that, we are just saying that okay, hide the this link and toggle to the other link. So look at what we are doing here in the CSS. So by default, you have two links for menu. One is show, one is hide. So the show link is displayed and the hide link is hidden. So when you click on that, it shows the menu. When you show the menu, we are reversing it and saying that show this link, hide the other link. So there are two links in your in your markup here, right? You have two links here, one and two. So this one is used to hide show. This is used to hide. So with pure CSS, just with a couple extra elements, and using the target method, we are able to hide and show, basically do the menu. Now the next part is do the animation. Add it. You know how to do it, right? Just add a CSS transition. Yes. Okay, so how many of you know what this is? Plus. Okay, so basically plus says that if you have this element here, plus says that okay, this is the next element after it. So if you have a page element that is immediately after menu, it will work. So you can do it in such a way. For example, let's say you have uh, you have a paragraph and you have some spacing above a paragraph, but just below a header you don't want spacing. So you can say it's pa paragraph top uh, margin margin top 20 pixels or two elves. And h2 plus paragraph margin top zero, so that any paragraph that is immediately after margin won't have top padding. So you can have a header and then a paragraph right away. So you have spacing between paragraphs, but not between a header and a paragraph. So, or you can, yeah. Yes. Uh, here. So you have this, but you don't have this. So why is that second one required? Second one having you have second. Why is this required? Yeah, that is yeah. Because we have absolute fixed it position fixed, not position absolute. Position fixed is always in relation to the viewport. Can you scroll? Okay. 
Okay. They should be able to see most of the code. Okay, so if the code is same but it's not working, that means there is a you have not typed it directly. <laughs> Delete it, type it again. Okay, so look at the HTML here. You have the navigation here, and then you have the page right after it, right? So what we're saying is, plus says that any page element it is immediately after this. So if you had, uh, you could say the same thing for header plus section would target only this section but not any other sections. So the first one it is immediately the right, right after it. So when I click on it, it uh, takes to that section. Yeah. When I click on it, it takes to that section. No, the plus is separate. What we are, when you are clicking on it, the target is changing. So we are saying when you click on this, then you are getting the hash menu, right? It's look at the URL. It matches this in the URL. Look at the URL. So go to the top. Look at that hash menu. So this ID is menu. The URL also has hash menu over there. So that that it is showing that you have clicked on this tab, this anchor. So the this anchor is this element is a target. So you are saying that menu is a target. So whenever menu is a target, then the page has to be moved. By default, it should not be moved. Only when the menu is a target, then you want to move the page. You don't want to move the menu. Yeah. You could use focus focus do that. Okay, any doubts so far? Okay, so about stuff like this, I'll discuss this at the very end. There are many, many different uh, CSS uh, selectors that you can utilize in addition to this. Uh, not really. Yeah, it should go like 8 plus. Yeah, it should go like 8 plus. Okay. So, yeah, somehow not everything that we are covering can be supported. You might have to use JavaScript to add support to some of these things. Yes. <laughs> You added the transition to the one with the class with the target. Add it to the page, the main page itself. Yes. Okay. All right. Everyone has everyone gotten up to here. Anybody who hasn't gotten this, I'll talk about the transition next. I'll show you where you are, you might have a problem. But up to here, how many have any any questions up to this stage? Anyone? No. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at the transition now. When you're adding the transition, don't add it to this element here. You need to add it to this element here. Okay. So let's do that. We want to add it to both the page and the menu link, right? So. Okay, so now, do that. Why isn't it working? We added it to page. Right. And then, yes. Nav? No, the nav is not supposed to animate, only the 
page and the menu link are supposed to animate. But why isn't it working? Now, when you are doing CSS transitions, always remember that the position has to be set properly. Okay? So now see this. The body is, the, tran the transition is happening there, right? But there is still one more problem. The body is supposed to move, it is not supposed to resize. It is resizing, right? Why is it resizing? Because we haven't set it a set of it. We are just saying my move left 200 pixels. We are not said that it should go beyond. So set the width of the page Okay, now see this. It's working properly. But the, but the link is not. The body is animating, but the link is not. Who can tell me why that's happening? Just need to the to But you have applied it to the menu, right? Here's the reason. We are not we are not moving the link. We are removing one link and showing another link. Right? It's not the same link. <laughs> Got it? So what we need to do is instead of showing and hiding it, we change the Z index so that one comes above the other. So then the, both of them will move. One will go behind, below, behind the other and you won't notice that. Both links look identical, right? So instead of using display then, use Z index. So I'll say that uh, here instead of display none, Z index is minus 1 and here Z index is 1. Let's see if that works. How about that? Now it's working. Because till now the problem was that one menu was being hidden, the next one was being displayed. There was no transition in between because the position wasn't changing. Two different elements were in use. Now we are having both the elements displayed at all times. We are just moving one behind the other. So both of them are moving together. You don't know when one comes out the other, it doesn't matter. That's it. So just take a look at this and I think we have finished with our main, all the exercises that we had decided. So we still have some time to cover a few extra things. So let's just finish this. Any doubts if you have, let me know. And uh, maybe I'll see if I can cover a few extra things.